day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice. It's a beautiful day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, our God is so gracious he is almighty and he is holy and on this sunday he invites each one of us in order to become like him he gives us this open and beautiful invitation that he is holy and we need to become also holy that he is perfect that we are also called to be perfect such beautiful, open, gracious invitation. I'm sure, my dear friends, time and again, we strive in order to be holy, to be perfect. But again and again, we fail because of our weaknesses, of our short-sightedness, of our limitations. And many a time that we are not able to see God as he is himself. If only we are able to imitate him, to be in his own image, that we can also strive day by day to become holier. Let us acknowledge our sinfulness and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned. sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Christ, the Lord, 
Christ and mercy pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever Amen. a reading from the book of Leviticus the Lord spoke to Moses saying Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incure sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear grudge against the son of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord is compassionate 
compassionate and gracious. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. Bless the Lord. St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, do you know that you are the God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy and you are that God's temple. Let no one deceive you himself. If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in his age, let him become a fool that may become wise, for the wisdom of the world is fully with God. For it is written, He catches the wise in their craftiness, and again the Lord knows the thought of the wise, that they are futile. So let no one boast in man, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apostle or Chippas or the world, or life or death, or the present or the future. All are yours, and you are the Christ, and the Christ is God's. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, Do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, Turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy but i say to you love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be the sons of your father who is in heaven for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust for if you love those who love you what reward do you have do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, the famous renowned theologian, Cardinal Avery Dulles, he saw a church banner that caught his attention. And in the banner, the letters read, God is other people. God is other people. And immediately, by being uh, attracted by this uh, banner, this Cardinal Dulles, he said, there is a comma missing in these words. And he went on to explain that without the comma, it would mean that we are God and God is us. Or in other words, God is everything and every, everything is God. But by placing the comma, God is other, comma, people. By placing the comma in these words, Cardinal Avery Dulles, he meant that it makes a big difference. That is, People listen, God is other. People listen, God is other. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, the first line of today's first reading and the last line of today's gospel reading is the same. Be holy as God is holy. Be perfect as the Heavenly Father is perfect. When we listen to this word holy, what does this signify to us? What do we understand by it? The moment when we hear, hear the word holy, it means it is the sense of being separate or other. 
in other words it is like distance the distance between the human being and the earthworm can we compare the earthworm to the human being not at all there is a great difference and distance between the earthworm and the human being so also when we speak about god's holiness god is the other there is a great difference between god and us and that this distance between god and us is greater god is other so god is only without utility that in the in other words when the human beings when we are holy it is going to be useful to us no god is holy without utility and god is perfect without becoming that means there is nothing that in god that needs to become that he is already holy he is perfect he is always holy so this word holy also we know it is to set apart unique sacred and that's how we see the holy vessels the sacred vessels that what we use for the celebrations sacred celebrations are set aside set apart we do not do anything and everything with them they are only for the holy purpose they are meant for god and that being said today's readings give us a very unifying message the first reading we see the israelites were called to be holy people to be holy like god from the book of leviticus we heard that how god had given them so many rules or commandments regulations so that these people follow these commandments in order to be holy and we also see in the second reading saint apostle the apostle paul saint paul he tells us he reminds us that we are the temples of the holy spirit we are not only set aside to love others or to love ourselves but our bodies to become the temples of the holy spirit in other words to be holy people sacred people to be other people in this world and in the gospel we see that jesus is completing the seven sayings for it was heard that it was said to you like this i say to you so last sunday we heard about uh, four of them and then now the continuation part in today's gospel so jesus is summoning the people from mediocrity to holiness it is not simply for the sake of telling that jesus is doing this but in other words he is giving us this exhortation to be perfect it is a special set of standard the christian standard jesus own standard you know when we are studying for exam good number of us surely by now we are preparing for the final examinations and what do we aim what should be our goal most of the parents i'm sure they would tell their children aim for high only when you aim for high somewhere you will reach so if you are aiming for 100% results i'm sure you will be able to get 100% or at least 99% or 98% and so on but if you do not aim higher or the highest i'm sure we will not reach anywhere and that's what jesus is doing that he is setting the highest standard for his followers i say to you if you are going to be my follower you need to be different you need to be the other so in the teachings that he is giving us today he says do not hate do not hate i am sure we live in a society in the context where there is a systemic and systematic oppression 
and uh, there are different policies that are being brought against Christians. There is hatred, political hatred, intellectual hatred, there is economic and cultural hatred. So in this scenario, Jesus is calling us not to hate others. He also says, exact no vengeance. In the year 2019, the survey conducted by Open Doors made a conclusion saying that today in the world, in more than 60 countries, the Christians are being persecuted. So, when we are being persecuted, what are we called to do? Jesus is telling, do not show vengeance. We will be destroyed if we get caught in the web of vengeance. Because the vengeance is the Lord's, not ours. Vengeance is the Lord's. So, Jesus Christ is also proposing going the extra mile. In other words, when we are trying to place before us an evil mechanism, he did this to me, I am going to do this for him. He has done this for me and I am going to do this. So in this evil mechanism, we are not going to be better at all. In other words, we can even destroy ourselves. And that's what we see in the most of the movies or um, the audiovisual content that we watch on our screens today is lot of violence, lot of hit back. He has given this to me and I am going to give it back to him. So more and more we see that violence, hatred, vengeance that is being inflicted and that is shown as if it is normal. But Jesus says, no, it is abnormal. But in other words, go the extra mile. If you are going to place your oppressor, the other person who is hurting you, surely your uh, righteousness will not be better than is because you will be driven to act or react in the same way what the other person has done. Hence, Jesus is giving us the image of God. Be holy as your heavenly Father is holy. So, we need to place ourselves, our comparison should not be others, should not be the people around us, but always only God. And that's where we make the mistake. Many a time we tend to compare ourselves, these People are living like this, I am living a better life. And when we do this, surely we are not going anywhere further. We are being stuck. Imago Dei, image of God. And in the image of God, that should be always our the highest standard in order to become like Him. And Jesus also says, turn the other cheek. By inviting us to turn the other cheek, Jesus is teaching that there is victory in defeat. That there, the light will prevail even if the darkness may prevail for some time. But the light will surely prevail. The truth will always be victorious and victory will be ours. And hence, he is asking us to turn the other cheek. And offer your cloak and tunic by charging us to offer our cloak to anyone who is seeking even to give our tunic, Jesus is inviting the Christian to make a remarkable difference in the society by being unique, by being extraordinary, by showing the sacrificial love. So Jesus came not only to fulfill the law, but also to make sure that we also imbibe the spirit. He did not water it down, he did not change it, but he made it so perfect so that we are also called to this perfect life. And hence, Jesus knows very well that it is not going to be easy. 
he promised his own presence that he will be with us so what christ is teaching is for everyone not only for christians is for all the people of this world that even those who are not with us even for them because in the end no one is the other in the end no one is the other mark twain the famous author he makes a cynical notion about our life he says we live in a very funny way how we pick and choose our friends these are my friends and they are not my friends this is my favorite and they are not my favorite by doing this by separating ourselves from others we begin to treat others as our enemies so in most of the ways that's what happens in most of the relationships that's what happens we do not trust everyone or anyone and that's why we have a kind of suspicion on others though they have not done anything at times when we sit in the flight or in the train or when we are walking on the road when we look at strangers when we look at people we look at them as others as strangers and sometimes we also have prejudices and that's the reason why people begin to have a, a stiff neck or a very indifferent face they do not have even a smile and at times if you happen to smile also the other person might think or interpret in a different way so we see that in this way that we are living that jesus is calling us to change this attitude basically he is telling us that we try to live in an illusion of seeing ourselves as loving people but are we loving people is the question that we need to ask because in the first letter of in the letter to hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 we see without holiness we cannot go to heaven in the first letter of peter chapter 2 verse 9 we are called to be a holy nation and we also see in the letter to ephesians chapter 5 verse 27 we are called to be holy and immaculate without stain or wrinkle or anything of that sort so the teachings of jesus they are here to transform our heart our whole life and they challenge us not only to be good but to be holy to be greater to be the other to become the other that is to become like god and that's the reason why in these days in the last uh, few uh, synodal consultations that have been taking place at the national level now at the continental level in the next week that we are going to have uh, in the asian uh, phase of the synodal consultation you know there is a new level of understanding so long we have been calling other religions other people but now we are called to tell neighbor religions when we say other religions other people we begin to look at them as others nothing but as enemies but what jesus is teaching us to treat as neighbors to treat as we treat ourselves and that's how the prayer of saint augustine he says once dear god if you had treated me as an enemy when i was your enemy how could i now call you my friend dear god if you had treated me as an enemy when i was your enemy how could i now call you as my friend the english convert g k chesterton once he wrote like this the bible actually tells us to love our neighbors and also it tells 
love your enemies probably because they are the same people neighbors and enemies are the same people and that i'm sure it gives us an eye opener in order to see who we are how little we are how imperfect we are how short sighted or narrow minded we are and what we need to become is something greater something large something beautiful something wonderful that god is inviting us to become like him to be holy to be the other and ends in the end of our lives there should not be the other person that all of us we are the children of god amen let us profess our faith i believe in god the, the father, father almighty, almighty creator, creator of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary he suffered death and died was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell on the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty from there he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen let us pray prayer of the faithful dear brothers and sisters we pray for the wisdom courage and strength to build our lives worthy of the gospel the standards of the world will not nourish our spiritual well-being let us pray for the gift of god to strengthen our spiritual life our response lord hear our prayer lord hear our prayer let us pray for our pope francis our archbishop and all the ministers of the church that they may become the messengers of reconciliation of god let us pray to the lord Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for the people that they may live according to the commandment of Jesus. May their lives preach the love of God and neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all the present here that we may find real joy and love from the Eucharistic celebration. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for those who serve the society that they may foster peace and prosperity to the people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with your love. Give us the grace to rise above our human wants and desires, having loved our neighbors and everyone, that we may love you with all the heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the almighty father may, may the lord, lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church as we celebrate your mystery so long with the observance that is your due we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through christ our lord 
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashion for us out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices we pray join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray to the Heavenly Father in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I need your touch, I need your love 
so very much once more and I'll be true and I will never offend you for no one else can take your place your power, your might, your glory, your grace please I'll be pleased come back to me to say very much once more and I'll be true and I will never offend you my Lord let us pray ground we pray almighty God that we may experience the effects of salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.